Oh my God. Woo. Woo. Don't mind the mess out of y'all. Y'all don't understand. I wait for people to come on in. Good Lord, let me get this thing out of here. What is that? Woo. Okay. All right, I'll just wait. Sorry about the mess behind me. This is... Okay. My house looked a mess behind me, don't it? I'm so sorry. I had really bad technical difficulties. Wait a minute. Y'all can't be seeing it. Well, you know what? It is what it is. Y'all see what it is. Hello, cookies. It's a mess. It's a mess in this house. I have one person on. Moderation house. Okay. Members only mode. Okay. Hello, who's there? I'm so sorry. It's a mess in my house. <laughs> I was trying to get home to be here at seven from an event. And then I had technical difficulties with this. I haven't done a, whatchamacallit, on the members only side before. And it was, it was weird. It was weird. Hey y'all, good evening. I'm so sorry for this delay. I don't like being late, but we're here now. And what I'm gonna do is I have um, a focus for today, but I do want to ask everyone, I don't think everyone's gonna get on tonight, but um, that's the point. Like sometimes you might not be able to get in on a live, but I'll have it saved in the members only portal for replay. But I want to, good evening, hello. Um, what I would like to do is ask everyone what is their um, what is their need for membership? Like if you signed up to learn more about content creation or if you joined to discuss more fashion, personal styling. Um, that way I could either start with certain things, you know what I mean? Because if we're mostly talking about content, then I'll start off with content and I'll wait to the end of the live to ask about, you know, what personal style questions we have. Content creation. Hey, y'all. Oh, my goodness. Listen, the group is very small right now. I think we have, I think, 18 members. Um, and what I'm going to do. Good evening. Content creation. Okay. So what I'm going to do. Don't mind the mess behind me. I the, I was on the train and then I had technical difficulties. And that's why I had a feeling I was like hard start 715 because I know something, New York City, something was going to keep me. I was at a Target event. Okay, so Bo, um, this live in particular, it will go, I will try to make it public. So people can kind of get an understanding of like what we are doing on this side of the cookie jar. Content creation, but a little bit of style and tips sprinkled in. Okay, so how about this? I know not everybody's logged in. Um, some people did tell me that they were going to just watch the live and the other two videos afterwards. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with the content creation topic and just kind of go through my spiel. And as I'm going, y'all can just ask whatever comes to mind, whatever comes to, um, to, to question, because I'm going to go through it. I'll stop. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll pause and I'll, I'll make sure I'll answer your questions. But today I think it was really important to start off. Yes, both not going to lie. I'm here for this. Oh, listen, and that's all right. So I'll talk about the content creation stuff just for a moment. Answer questions that come in for that. And then what I'll do, we'll do a little bit of an audit for social media people that, you know, they want to get some perspective on how their page comes across and what to do more or less of. Um, or even sometimes I'll come up with a concept for someone to do for like a series. For instance, today I was talking to my dad, who's a photographer, as many of y'all know that. Um, he has he wants to do more on social media but he's always done still photography not video work and i told him i said you know what i think you should go into your archives 
And I think you should go on TikTok and Instagram and you should do a, a faceless video where we're only looking at the photos, whether it's one or more. And you should do a voiceover storytelling the day of that photo. What happened? You know, what political figure did you come across or what funny story happened along the way? How did you get into like he has pictures of Spike Lee and he was not even supposed to be in the room. And I'm like, you got to tell people these stories. They're iconic. So sometimes when I'm looking at people's pages, I can see concepts just off of, you know, first impression. So I want to talk about mindset today. And I know this is very, it's base level. And at this point, maybe some of y'all are already on your content creation careers, or you're just starting or you're thinking about it. But I think as I was getting into it, I kind of got thrown into this space by accident. You know, I was running my business, Noir Bud. I posted a beauty brand. They reached out, the owner reached out, and then asked me if I wanted to work with them and make money off of it. And then I'm like, this is 2021, I think. And I was like, wait a minute, people make money off this shit? This is crazy. So that's when I really started taking it a bit more serious. And for the last year or so, I've been full time. And I wished a lot that someone would have talked to me a little bit about what to expect or what kind of mindset to keep in in myself to remain positive or to keep going or all of the above, right? And if you just come in here, don't mind the mess behind me, okay? I didn't have time to clean up Carlos's stuff, okay? But listen, I really thought best practice first is having a good mindset behind this. You know, you want to make sure that you're entering this space, whether it's for yourself, personal page, or your business page with good intentions and that you are willing to share a part of yourself and that you are understanding that once you put yourself on Beyonce's internet, anything can happen. You can go viral, you can have haters, you can have good times, you can have all the things but that you are ready to open up yourself or part of yourself. Because the truth is you can show yourself only this much and that's all you want to share. And people will think they know you through and through. It's a reality, right? But you are taking the step to share yourself full blown on these internet streets. And I think one of the first things that someone, I wish someone would have showed me or told me was don't have expectations of people of the internet, of the algorithm, just have expectations on yourself. Show up for yourself and only for yourself. I think, you know, entering the space, I, ex I expected to be welcomed by all these amazing influencers or content creators that I was inspired by immediately. And the truth was when I, when I first got into the space, you know, and was trying to introduce myself it wasn't that it was clickish. It was just more like, well, who is she? You know, like, is she serious about this? What is she getting into? What does she want? Does she want to use us to grow? You know, I'm sure all those types of thoughts were coming to mind when I was entering the space. And, you know, I got really scared about it. And, you know, I had to think about it. I shouldn't expect people to just be welcoming and open arms. I shouldn't expect to be a part of certain cliques. I shouldn't expect to, to make friends that quickly. I should just expect to show up for myself and remain consistent with the content that I want to share. So that was the first thing, you know, understanding I'm sharing a part of myself, not having expectations of other people or brands. You know, some brands you'll tag brands to death. They will not respond. They will not see you. And that's not a reflection of you as a person not being good enough. It's just sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't come across them that easily, or they might have you saved in the folder to check on your growth later on and to check on your engagement later on. It could be several different things, but it's not a reflection on you. So when we have an expectation of someone answering us or, you know, wanting to work back with us, sometimes it takes a little bit longer, you know, and it's, it has nothing to do with you as a person. But I think that had I had less expectations, I wouldn't have felt let down several times in this journey so far. And I feel that the last year or so, that's when I was like, you know what? I'm gonna stick to my own damn lane. I'm gonna stick to myself. I'm gonna figure this shit out. And as soon as I really switched gears mentally, that's when things started to open up in a different way for me. That's when, 
you know, I think I took myself serious and, you know, brands that I really admired would reach out or, you know, invite me to something, not necessarily pay me for anything, but just at, at least get to know them. Right. And I wish I had that mindset from the beginning because it was tough. My first fashion week back as a con, like I've always done fashion week when I was in uh, corporate space, but as a content creator, I was very depressed my first fashion week back. I was like, oh my God, th this world is mean. Like, I don't know how I'm going to navigate. It seems so freaking, what's it called? Exclusive or, or there's a lot of gatekeeping and there is, there is, but I think, um, I needed to create something of my own, like created my own series on Instagram where I was answering style questions and throwing my own twist on a particular outfit that people could either just enjoy or be inspired and do it themselves too. So I think that was something that people started to connect with more. And I think that another thing that I wish someone would have told me in the beginning was you're going to have to make certain sacrifices as far as your time. As, as far as, you know, if you have a nine to five, because who in here and start telling me certain things about y'all, like, are you just starting off? Are you in the midst of it? Are you trying to pivot? Are you wanting to push your brand more on content uh, on social media? Like, tell me a little bit about where you're at in content creation. Just on YouTube and being intentional about branding image, how to display it on social media. I need help. I don't have any platforms other that why is this heart in my way uh, other than TikTok? And that is new as well. Okay, you're just starting out. All right. And listen, when it comes to doing YouTube, it is very, um, YouTube is very time consuming. However, I think when I started focusing more on YouTube, my consistency and my motivation grew. When I decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to sacrifice my time. Like I have a business. And when I get to the end of the day around 5 p.m., I'm switching gears and I'm going to write out all my ideas. I'm going to execute these ideas. And no matter what kind of camera I have or don't have, they're going to get what they're going to get. And we're just going to grow. And once I can afford up updates, then I will. You know what I mean? So making a sacrifice in time and getting out of your own way, that is something to keep a top of mind. I'm starting from zero. I have dedicated an hour today to learn video editing. I have so many ideas for video posts. What kind of editing applications are you using? I'm just curious. Um, so sacrifice is one topic that a lot of people don't discuss. You know, um, making the time for this. It's either you are the type of person that wants to batch your content or you're the type of person that can create content in real time. So let's say if you want to do an outfit of the day, you know, before you head out, you have your tripod and everything set up in the corner. You do your video. And then once you get to lunchtime, you edit it real quick and you post it. Right. But then if you're the type of person that can't really do that, then batching content at, on a Saturday morning and then releasing those things throughout the week, whether it's short form or a YouTube video, then you could do that. I have Final Cut Pro also learning CapCut for short form. Yes. And you know what? Honestly, I still use iMovie for my, my YouTube editing. So that's what I mean. Like sometimes you can start off in a space where you feel like it's not the best of the best. It's not using Photoshop. It's not Final Cut Pro, but it gets the job done until I can learn it. And I think the fact that you're teaching yourself and you're learning that format, there are certain things about Final Cut Pro that are super simple that will make you feel really, um, what's it called? Really confident about your editing style. And then you'll start rolling them out. But I think um, Miss Homebody, I want to get back to you. What's your what's your YouTube page name? I want to take a look at that. Um, but yeah, sacrifice is a big deal. Time is a big one. I've learned that too. It seems editing and being in my head has been the hardest. You're right. It takes a lot of time. I've learned. I use iMovie because it's free. It, yes, exactly. Okay, so it is Miss Homebody on YouTube. So time is 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 a big deal. 
And you know what? People always ask me, how are you so consistent on YouTube especially? And it's because like I made a decision and it's like when, when a person makes up their mind and they say, I'm not going to let anything get in my damn way. I don't give a fuck what it is. These kids, these dishes, this job. And then sometimes even if you get out of a certain commitment after the time that you were supposed to refocus on social media, it could be you meant to start at 7 p.m. And now you're getting home at 8.30. You're like, you know, I don't give a shit. I'm going to start at 9. And I'm going to do this for two hours because I want this bad. When you make up your mind, everything becomes a non factor in what you what your goals are. Okay, so let me look at your page really quickly. So you are a cooking channel. Okay, y'all. Hold on. Let me turn this down just to see. Is your your videos are faceless? Is what I'm noticing so far. And no voiceover. Okay. Okay, Miss Homebody. I'm looking. Wait, correction, Miss Homebody Network. Okay, that's not right. Okay, okay, all right, my bad. Let's get out of there. Let's get out of there. Um, because I was about, I was about to, <laughs> I was about to give you feedback on that page. Whoever that is, I'm gonna be like, I want you to to voice over your recipes, please, <laughs> so people can know your um your personality through your voice. Okay. So Homebody Network, is this it? Okay, hold on real quick. I gained a small following on IG and would like to shift gears and use a platform to promote my budding business. YouTube is very alluring, alluring, but putting myself out there is intimidating. Okay, what kind of business do you have? Been on IG for a couple of years, but sometimes feels awkward, less curated posts and reels. Okay, so I'm gonna put you out there real quick every day, Elise. Every day, Elise is actually one of my one-on-one -on -one clients. And Elise, every day, Elise, can you share a little bit about what tactics we applied? You know, I know we're taking a little bit of break for other reasons, right? But what tactics did we apply that you felt worked best for you? Um, no, that's not right. That's so weird. Not homebody network. You know what's strange? Sometimes when you're just starting out on... YouTube, your um, your channel sometimes has issues showing up at first. I don't know what that's about, but let me look on here and see if I could find it here. I have a nine to five and a photographer and still trying to do content. It's hard to find time. It, it is, it is, but you know what though? I want you to look past those, those road bumps because if you really want something, you create time. And I'm listen, I understand you might get tired. You might feel low on energy, but as long as you're making a little bit of effort for an hour every day, at least towards this space, it's going to pay off in the long run. I'm still looking for Miss Body. That is so strange. Put up your um your link in there for me, okay? Because yeah, I copy and paste the name and it's not coming up. Um my commitment and consistency is there. I just sometimes feel like I don't know what I'm doing. My content is personal style, outfit is it okay? And NYC. Listen, and sometimes it's not going to feel like you have your shit together. Like some days I, I post stuff and I run. I post and I run. Sometimes that's why you guys don't see me comment back until 24 hours later because I'm terrified to see what happens with a particular post on YouTube and on Instagram. On Instagram, I run so quickly. It's, it's really strange how I haven't gotten over that, but I'll go back to the post and then I'll get into the comments. But I'm always terrified because sometimes I feel like I don't know what I'm doing either. And I think just showing up every day, that's all that matters. And then you'll start to get a groove for what you're doing for yourself. 
Um, but continue to do it. Show up every day. Yes, keep the consistency there. What if you feel like your home space isn't ideal for filming content? Not a lot of space or modern feel. Like I feel the same way about my space. I feel the same way about my space. I do not like it. I have to like maneuver. We have very little space in this apartment. I have to maneuver this situation over. I have to move things out of the out of view all the time. Sometimes just making a little corner for yourself is good enough, you know. And and like I said, sometimes you're going to start off and nothing's going to feel right. Nothing's going to feel refined. The lighting's going to be too yellow or red. The shit is going to piss you off, but at the end of the day, you have to start somewhere. And as you grow, you can change those things little by little, but you got to find a little pocket, a little corner, your safe haven and, and curate the space a little bit. Maybe put up a, a curtain or something, bring in an extra light from Amazon that's 20 bucks. You know what I mean? But it's not going to feel comfortable at first. And I think we, and honestly, honestly, you know what? I really feel like this year, no one wants aesthetically pleasing or extra curated. This shit is fake. If that is your space, that is your raw truth. That's what the people want. The people relate to that. The people connect with that. And yes, I know that there's a fear about growing and refining ourselves. And then people are like, oh, you too good for us now. Like, then that's not your tribe anymore. Your tribe is going to shift and change as you grow. But really get out of the thinking that my home space is not good enough. Because I'm going to tell you right now, this whole time I've been on YouTube, I do not like my space. I hate it here. I'm very depressed in this apartment when I'm not creating, you know, when there's noise happening, when the neighbors are doing stupidness, you know, things like that, or when the sound systems from other apartments filter in here, you know, but I decide, okay, I'm going to create it this hour because it's usually quiet at this time. I like the lighting during this time of day. I'm going to use this corner. I have two, th two or three corners that I use all the time and I just commit myself to that. And that's the only reason why I'm so consistent with creating in the space that I do not like is because I've decided these are the these are the corners that I'm going to always use, right? Okay. Um, no, that's not right. Let me, okay, add it there. I want to use IG TikTok to promote my small business. I want to make better and more curated photos and videos and maybe work with influencers. Okay, so listen. When you have a business on these platforms, it is imperative to continuously tell the story of you as an owner, but also how your product can provide a need to a problem or how it can create be more beautiful spaces or how it could just be a cherry on top of someone's day and continuously showing that narrative. When it also comes to different curations and videos and photos, you know, you come from, you are from FIT and I've seen you work with visuals. You are a master at visual entertainment. Honestly, like the way that you see colors and patterns, Aaron, you are dynamic and genius and a beautiful artist. So I want you to not be afraid of showing that and also taking different angles. I see you going on these trips and getting your angles and continuously do that. Like, don't stop. Get in nature. I know you love nature too. You know, show these aspects. And this is the thing. Is it that we want to be perfect for a particular demographic or do we just want to create and attract the tribe that we know is there that will find us? Because I'm not chasing a demographic. I am welcoming a tribe. And I think that's another mindset switch to add when being in these spaces. And when it comes to working with influ <clears throat> influencers, I'm going to be doing a, um, a, a focus where businesses and influencers basically have like a conversation. So what I'll be doing is helping you understand how to approach an influencer with a service or product that you have and what is in it for them, what's in it for you, what kind of documentation and verbiage you need to have to make sure that you do get some type of content and get something out of the service or whatever, right? Um, just so you don't approach it in a way that you feel you're robbed or that you're giving away product that you're not ever going to see back or that they're not going to post, 
you know, there's a way to go about it and don't be afraid. It's just, you, you need a couple of tools in there. You definitely need some tools in there. Um, it's giving, I might need to change my name. Nobody can find me. Oh no. Okay. You know, how about this? You email me. Y'all can all have my email. This is, this is, this, um, I want to understand why your name's not showing up on there. Um, and what you need to do on the back end to make it show up. So email me your phone number and we, we need to get on a call and figure that out. Cause there's something that I think is happening on the back end of your channel, or you need to hit a certain requirement for it to be visible better. That that's not correct, Graham, but you know what I'm saying. Good evening, president is still working. Hello. Thank you for joining. I think allocating time each day, usually when it's the quietest in the house, sans distractions to post and get my reels together. Exactly. So you are more of a real time creator every day, at least. Also embracing the idea that people want to see what I feel are the Monday day to day things and activities capturing those moments. This And that's why I'm saying like, we have to kind of get out of this mindset of old, always having curated postings because people are, look at Risa Tisa. Risa Tisa was in her house, head tied up in the car. We in traffic with her in Atlanta, telling her story, her story that many women and men have experienced. And now she is out here living her best creator ass life. Okay. I wish I would have told a damn story with 50 parts. Okay. People love relatability. They love to see day to day. They want to see someone else clean their house too. And they're not going to clean their house either way, but they want to see someone else clean. You know what I'm saying? So like we really underestimate the realities of our day to day and sharing that and understanding that there's a tribe for us, that they're going to connect with us. My, um, um, my posts do way better on TikTok than IG, but I guess it's the audience. And that happens. I think if that is the case right now, lean into the growth that you're having and the connection that you're having on TikTok. Do not pay attention to what's going on with it on a federal level. Hopefully we can work that out. We can stay on there because TikTok is a great place once you embrace it. But lean into it. I feel like maybe TikTok, are you a bit more raw on TikTok? Then on Instagram, because Instagram is a very slow growth. It's a very slow growth over there. YouTube is a slow growth as well. But Instagram, I think, is a much slower growth until like you hit a certain algorithm and growth. And then you then it's beatboxing and it's the party. And then everybody pull out. Everybody come up to the party. But truth be told, there are several algorithms happening at one time on Instagram. You just got to catch a wave on one of them. You know what I mean? And it and it happens. When it happens, it happens. And do not get frustrated with the timing. Just continuously be consistent with posting. My posts are better on YouTube, but they are not really gaining traction. So with the posts that you're doing on YouTube, are you doing shorts? Or are you doing videos? You're welcome, Erin. Um I added the link twice. I'm not sure why it's not showing up. Yeah, I don't see anything. What the hell? Uh-uh. Um, yeah, that's what I'm wondering about influence. I have a very small, non-existent budget for marketing, and I don't want to offend potential influencer partners. Okay, and this, this is a reality. I've worked with plenty of brands that are budding new brands or brands that do not have a marketing budget at this time, right? And the reality is, how I would prefer some of these people to approach me is, can you take a look at our website and let us know if you feel connected to anything? You know, we don't have a budget right now, but we would love to send you something gifted to experience. And there's no obligation to post, but if you do, that would be great. You know, because sometimes they'll tell me like, we think you would be a great fit. We want to give you a gift in exchange for a post. And I'm just like, I look at the website and I'm like, this is medieval jewelry. <laughs> What the hell about me says I wear medieval jewelry? I don't, what is going on here, right? So I wish that it was a little bit more honest and upfront in the beginning about them just like wanting to introduce themselves or at least asking like, if you don't feel connected, do you know anyone else that might be open to working with us? We're just trying to get our foot out there. You know what I mean? So, and, and 
hopefully you connect with influencers who are, I'm very honest with brands. I'm like, no, no, thank you. I'm good. You know, I don't think that this is a, a good fit, but I think maybe this type of influencer is more your jam because I've seen them wear stuff like this before. Because I don't want people to send me stuff that I'm not going to wear or I'm not going to feel proud to talk about. You know what I mean? So just asking them their honest opinion, like, hey, can you take a look at the lookbook and let me know like how you feel about my brand? I would love to do something. You know, it would be on a gifting basis, but I would love to potentially maybe depending on the business model, right? What you can also offer is a discount code or an affiliate link. So when someone goes to, so when an influencer posts your stuff, they have their own link. So when you see someone purchasing from that link, when you do your analytics on the back end of your website, you can see how many sales this person has created for you. And you could promise them five to 10% of each sale at least like at, we can try to do some type of affiliate marketing commission based situation, you know, but I would love to have you a part of my brand. It's really about what you say first and just letting them know you just want to know if they're interested in your brand and if they would be open to maybe at least doing some type of affiliate marketing for you if they're connected to something that you have or if they know someone that connects to your brand. Right. Um Oh, oh, wait. Uh, what would you consider the first step to personal branding? The first step to personal branding is, if you haven't already, is really doing some deep diving soul searching on yourself and really understanding what exactly do I love? What can I talk about till I'm blue in the face? What can I not shut up about? What do my friends come to talk to me about all the time? What do they ask me for help for? And really figure out what that is. Now, when I was doing, when, when I started doing content creation more seriously, I was running full-time a wellness cannabis brand. And before that, I was in fitness management for Equinox and private hoity-toity gyms bougie gyms, right? Child boo. But I had ran away from fashion because I hated my experience. I felt very silenced. I felt very out of sorts. I felt unwelcomed. I felt like the only black girl. I hated that. I felt like if I did work with other black women in the, in the fashion space, they did not lift me up at all. I was in the dark most of the time. And my final fashion job in, in the business was very traumatic. Um, but God got their ass. That lady got fired three weeks after she let my ass go. <laughs> anyway, but, <laughs> but I ran away from fashion. And when I realized that me posting about a beauty brand that I really, I respected, it was Jones Road Beauty and Bobby Brown owns that brand. And I post, I was like, y'all look at this. Bobby Brown got this new stuff because I've always loved List, looking to see what my favorite makeup artists were doing, Pat McGrath, Bobby Brown, you know, all these people or different designers that I really loved. And I was always checking in on the industry. So I would buy into the industry and I would just share things with my friends that I had at that time on social media, like just people I actually really knew. And they found the post. They were like, can we send you a gift? I, I, I said, oh my God, they sent me a gift. This is so cool. I never had this experience before. And then Bobby Brown herself called me. They asked my number. She called me and she said, I want to work with you. I want you to become a content creator with our brand. And I want to pay you for this stuff. And it opened up a whole, I was mind blown, right? And I realized, I said, you know, I really, I do love beauty. I do love fashion. I, there's nothing, there's no, there's no denying it. I can't get away from this shit. I wear it like, you know, and I realized I cannot run away from this stuff. I can talk about wellness too. I love wellness as much as, as well, but not as much as fashion and beauty. And I had to really release the fact that I'm not going to be a guru of mental health or cannabis and like helping people through. Like I can, I did classes. I still teach people about cannabis, but what I really feel alive with is fashion and beauty. And it, it took me a minute to really sit with myself and accept the fact that I am not my trauma of what I ran away from. 
I am still that despite the treatment I received. Now I'm going to carve my own lane. So really, you got to sit with yourself and really understand what is it that you do well? What is it that you that you love hard? And that is your leading light, how you navigate. Um, but really, first step is some soul searching. First step is, you know, like I said, having a certain mindset. Let me go through the rest of my list of my mindset tools because, okay, um, checking in with your mental health. So I said, the first thing I said was just having um, an ex no expectations of other people or brands. Just create for yourself, be consistent for yourself. Um, don't have expectations to create friends right away in certain spaces. Like you create your lane, your tribe will find you. Um, sacrificing time, sacrificing maybe going out sometimes, you know, unless it, it, it creates content for you, right? Sacrificing certain... Um, certain other habits, you know, like if you want to invest in this space, then okay, maybe scale back on, and I'm not coming for nobody because I know I don't drink liquor, but maybe less alcohol on the weekends or, you know, because sometimes that shit is expensive, okay? You know, doing less of certain things so you can invest in this, right? Sacrifice. Um, if you're late to showing up for this particular role after your nine to five, you're going to have to sacrifice a little bit of sleep just to get that time in, Right. Mental health check-in. Where are you at mentally? Are you going to be able to deal with not getting the likes that you expected at first? Are you going to be able to deal with the slow growth? Are you going to be able to deal with showing up for yourself until the tribe really comes through and not taking it personal? Check in with your mental health. I also want to say picking your friends wisely is really important as well going with your gut and, and saying to yourself like, okay, this person feels good. And I, I think I want to let them know whenever I'm going to something or, you know, I'm going to ask them if they know about any networking event or anything that I could tag along with. I want to ask, I want to go with that person. And when you feel something ain't right about somebody, follow that shit. And I'm telling you from personal experience, follow that shit. There's been people I've come across in this space. And at first I said, something about them make, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. And you know what? My dumb ass stayed around and found out and I see how they treat certain people and I see how they step on other people. Follow your gut in this space, whether it's fashion, whether it's cooking, whether it's fitness. If you feel like somebody is weird, don't fuck with them. Be cool. Be cordial. Do the things, but don't spend a lot of time with those types of people. If you feel in your gut, something's not right. Trust me, because recently I found out some shit. I'm just like, that's why. That's why I felt that way. And we're going to stay far away from that. All right. Okay. But follow your gut. And the other thing is, this is a little controversial. While you are growing in this space, it is perfectly okay to feel envy of other people or like there's a, there's a, there's a safe amount of comparison that you can do as long as that envy or comparison motivates your ass. It puts a fire under your ass. If someone is making you feel envy and jealous of what they have or being like, how they get that? I don't understand. How, ugh, I can't stand that person. If those are the feelings that you have internally, that's not the good envy. Unfollow me. Get away from that. Get away from that because you don't need that type of that type of inspiration. Have the right kind of envy to keep you motivated, to keep you on your toes. There's a certain amount of envy that is okay and healthy to have. We are human. Whoever said that you can't be envious of somebody, that's a damn lie. Job boo. Envy is, is, is healthy. The right amount and the right placement of it. And the last thing, I also want to mention is when you are inspired by someone in any of the spaces that you're creating in, give credit, give credit when it's due. Just say, listen, I, I love this idea. I want to do it myself with my own spin. Thank you, X, Y, and Z for, for doing this because 
without you, child, I would have had nothing to give on this day. Or, you know, I wanted to do something, but this really helped push me in the right direction. Thank you, X, Y, and Z. Be that person that gives the credit when credit is due, because there are so many people out here that's not giving credit. And, you know, they be big influences and little old me. I'd be like, I saw you by myself, but that's all right, whatever. At the end of the day, God got me, right? But I peeped it. It felt a little weird and it's not a big deal. But I wish there were more give credit when it's due type of people. Okay, let me go back up here now. Hold on. Come on with the raw and unfiltered content. Yes. I actually just repost the same content. I post on TikTok first and I go to IG, then I do a YouTube short. That is healthy. Here's the thing, though. I realized in doing that, we have a lot of people that are very similar on the, um, like we have similar tribes on those platforms, right? I encourage this. Make like sometimes I'll do a one minute version of a video and I then I do an extended version on TikTok where, you know what I'm saying? Like you might create a, a video, you keep the video running and doing what you're doing. And in some things you'll keep in and some things you'll take out. Do your shorter video on Instagram, one that's a little bit more curated and do a more raw cut the unedited version on TikTok. And I wonder what can happen with that for you. But I, I encourage you to try something a little zesty with that to make it a little bit different. And then with YouTube short, let me tell you something about YouTube short. I'm, I don't like YouTube short because you can't have music past 15 seconds. That's the dumbest shit ever. So you really have to shorten it to really get the music going unless you're using um, copyright free music. But I don't, I don't like YouTube shorts just for that. And I should be using YouTube shorts way more. But I don't like the limitation on the music time. And that's some bullshit. But I implore you to try that little difference um, from Nisha's view when it comes to the same content that you're posting and reposting. Give it a little bit of difference just so people feel like they're getting something extra or that it's just a different point of view. Um, shorts on YouTube, trying to get braver about creating videos. Only been on YouTube since mid-January 2024. Okay. So listen, it it is, I, well, YouTube shorts is great, but I feel that unless you have a viral situation, like a viral video, it takes a lot more time and like it takes longer to get certain views and traction from YouTube shorts when you're first beginning. Um would you like to use those videos on other platforms since it's short form anyway? Um, so true fashionist, you can be so scared. You know it. I sent over the okay, thank you. Um, you are so right. Go with your gut and bite you in the ass when you don't. Um, thank you for this push imposter syndrome. It is real, it is real, and sometimes you know it'll get the best of us, but like try to only allow yourself a day of that. Like and then fight it the next day. Credit where is due. Going to do that. Your name is going to pop up. That's all right. That's okay. Yes, it sucks to have people take your content and run. It really does. Like it's it's, it's strange. It's a little weird. Or when they know that like they used your link to buy something and they're like, oh yeah, I was I had my eye on this for a while. But it's like you see me in it though. That why can't you, it's okay. You gonna wear it different anyway. You know what I mean? So it's stuff like that. Like you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that guy. It's just like, oh, that's how they be doing it. You know what I mean? So just, just be mindful. And, and if, if like in the moment you're making a YouTube video, let's say, because this happened to me a few times, I'll be like, oh my God, what is this person's name? I'm going to put up their name when I, when I'm there. Because sometimes when you're in the moment and you don't prepare yourself with your outline well enough, then you're like, oh shit, I forgot this person's name. I don't want to forget their name. I'll put their, I'm gonna put their picture up. I'm gonna link everything for y'all. At least do that. You know what I mean? But just be honest about it in the time. Don't worry about looking unprepared. Like we're human. We're human. I feel you. Even with with you, some something tells me people watch you more. You get credit for even in the fashion issues. Yeah. And, and you know what though? And I, I forget who was asking me this. Oh, my friend, my, my um, she a business owner. I, I went to dinner with her yesterday. And she was just like, 
how do you deal with this or how do you get over it? And honestly, it really used to bother me. And I think that's why not having a certain mindset or not having a certain warning about what could be, what it could feel like in this industry from the jump, it took me a year to really manage my feelings <laughs> and my position in things or like my, what's it called? my motivation to stay in this space, it took me a year to get around that shit because I I thought about, I overthought about everything. I'm like, they don't like me. They take my ideas. Oh my God. Like this bitch, this, da, 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 da. And like, I was taking everything so personal. And then I really thought about, I said, you know what? Sometimes it's okay to be the influencer's influencer. Sometimes it's, it's not going to be, it, the credit's not going to come to me, but you know what? Every time I feel sad or slighted or not my best self or just a negative feel, my intention with my own work is always going to remain the same. And that is why God always, or universe, whatever y'all believe in, I don't want to push my belief on nobody. God always gives me back tenfold to repay that negative feel or to feel you know, that I got something back. If somebody didn't give me credit, God gave me another opportunity. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you the way things turn around and I, and, and it would be the moments I'm just like, I peep that. Like, come on now. Like, why we, why you got to do it like that? And then a week later, we're looking to uh, cast a creator for this role. Can you tell us what your rate is? Oh, 2,500, no problem. Can you come next week? So when that started to happen, I said, you know, I'm just going to let it go. The moment I said, I'm just going to let it go. I'm not going to sweat off this. God showed up many ways, a lot, like and very quickly, okay? So you have to let go of certain things and don't take it personal because the way the universe will pay you back and get you right and get you in front of the line, don't underestimate it. But remember what I said, th there's a mindset you have to adopt if you haven't already to remain on the straight and narrow for this space. I use shorts on other platforms, but they don't get many views. I'm in the 200 200s jail on TikTok. I had to go over 800 in a day and I was doing backflips. What is your, um? because I'm, I'm like not trusting YouTube right now. What is your TikTok name? Uh -uh, TikTok, always trying to show me an ad before I can even look at anything. Miss Smith, tell me your TikTok name. And matter of fact, everyone, whoever wants me to review their Instagram or their TikTok page, put your name, your, your apps in here. Okay. Okay. I found you. I got you. All right. So. All right, let's start off with this. Follow back. Oh, where'd it go? Wait, go back. So your bio or your description, I'm going to go through this. I'm glad we're a small group for now because this is going to get aggressive once this like grows. <laughs> All right, style, conscious, consumption, inspiration, aspiration in America. What flag is this? Barbados? Please don't be mad at me if I don't know my flags. All right. Yes. Three tops, three bottoms, three pairs of shoes. Yes. Okay. All right. Let me see. Yes. I was about to tell you, make sure you back up your video so they see the full body from head to toe. Because I don't know what it is on TikTok. Why did, why did Paul put the, the camera... Up, you can't see nobody feet and none of their videos. It's very frustrating. So I'm glad you like backed up and you did it. I want to encourage you to do more video when you're doing your outfits. Pictures are fine, 
but they can date date a little bit. So do more video when it comes to showing your outfits. Just like you opened the beginning of the video, I, I think you should do that throughout the whole thing. Um, okay, so you're doing, so you got some lifestyle video in here. I like that. Okay, yes. I like this. So here's the thing about TikTok. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Here's the thing about TikTok that I want everybody to get on today. You have your TikTok name, you have your description, and you have your name up top, right? This is what y'all going to have to change today. In order to make yourself more, um, what's it called? So people could find you easier or if you want to be in a certain um, industry, you have to change a few things. So you're at, I'm going to use my page for instance. So I have my It's Carolyn Gray name underneath my avatar, right? It's Carolyn Gray. But if you ever go on my page and notice at the very top, my name, my searchable name is fashion, wellness, and comedy, because those are the three pillars of my content. So whatever your content is based on, I suggest that you put it, you change your, your very top name on your profile to reflect that, whether it's fashion whether it's fitness, cooking, put it at the very top because this helps you become a bit more searchable. Think of TikTok as the new Google because it is, right? So think about your name up here, something that is easy to be searched for. What do you want people to, what do you want people, what should, what should your name be according to what people are searching for? SEO, exactly. Exactly. So go on your settings, edit your profile and change that name around. And you know what? From time to time, change it to different things just to see what sticks like spaghetti on the wall. OK. And then with your bio, I have my bio teaching you how to maximize your closet and get Zen with a side of comedy. So you can expand on your top name in your bio and don't be afraid to create a link tree or a bio site that can take people to your other platforms or your website or your YouTube page, any of those things. Because you can add your Instagram or whatever, right? You can add your other pages, but have some type of link tree so people can see if you have a newsletter, if you have a um, LTK account. So if you're showing different products, home goods, fashion, whatever, you can source and link all those things and people can use your link to purchase those things and you make commission. And listen, I'm going to tell you right now, everything's going to be pennies at the beginning. Everything's going to be pennies at the beginning, but it grows over time. And the other thing too, the reason why it's so important to create consistency in posting, let's say you post something out of the blue and for whatever reason, it goes viral. There's a certain amount of stress that comes with being viral. And you know what? Sometimes it's cool if you can handle it. Sometimes it's very stressful because it's like, what are you going to follow up with? So when you're consistently being yourself and you're showing up online every day, every other day, you want to be able to maintain that consistency if one of those things go viral. So people don't lose interest or because I was scared for Risa Tisa after I'm like, so when this story is done, we got millions of views. We got millions of new followers. What are we going to do afterwards? We're going on a world tour with her. She's going to Netflix. She's now a creator. Like I'm excited that these opportunities came, but I actually was very nervous for Risa Tisa once the story was done. Like what next? What are we doing now? And you don't want to go viral without a plan. OK, so let me just go back to the top. Um, I would like to support all of you too. Exactly. So we're gonna exactly we're gonna get on this and we're gonna at least we're gonna start from TikTok today or Instagram and we're gonna follow each other back on here. All right. Let me just make sure. Um Miss Smith is all right. It is Barbados. Yes. 
I know that flag. Okay, we'll do it tonight. Okay, yes. All right, so let me go to the next page. Uh, uh, Miss Smith, do you need me to look at anything else? Because what I want for you, I want you to do a, a lot more video when it comes to your um, outfits. Don't, don't do the photos. Change that up because you are a personality. You are very much alive. And like I, we, people want to know that that person in real life and movement. Photos are beautiful. Keep that for Instagram from time to time, right? But on TikTok, do the video and keep it there because you got a body yaddy, you got the fits, you're looking good, you're having a good time. I want to see you moving it. So let's change that up and let's change our top name and add a little bit more to your bio because I think, let me just double check. So I want I want you to make these words make more sense. <laughs> um, I'm just saying you do like you've got a body like come on style conscious consumption. Um, why you got the style dot con conscious? Take that out of there. Style conscious consumption. Okay, what kind of inspiration and aspiration? You you tell us. Keep the flags up there. But you tell what kind of inspiration and aspiration are we looking for from you? Okay. My nose is burning because it's it's allergy season. And um I, I don't like I don't have tissue right now. I'm sorry. Uh let me go to the next name that I got. Okay. Rin, I got you. Do to do. Okay, so this is your business page, right, Aaron? All right. So same thing with you, Ren Textiles. This is, yes, this is your name. I do understand this. But maybe we could change this top name to Fashion Textiles. Or what are some other, why am I blanking on certain fashion terms right now when it comes to textiles? Oh my God. Okay, something around that. Hand painted silk scarves, upcycled denim. Hmm. Rintextiles.com. Does this work? No. Aaron, you got to get your website, um, a website link in there. So you need to change the setting, go in settings and make sure or edit your profile and make sure that rintextiles.com is actually tappable so they can go to it. So I'm wondering. Something along the lines of upcycled fashion should be your top name or not. Um, okay, let me just go. I've seen some of these. Hold on. I haven't seen this. Let me see. DIY fashion, upcycled denim, lace embroidery. Let me see what comes up with upcycled denim. Sorry, I'm just looking at, cause I saw that you use uh, some hashtags. I think hashtags are good when it's very related to the content that we're looking at. Okay, I thought I couldn't do that unless I had a certain amount of followers. Is that it? Shit. Some of these things I'm forgetting when it comes to TikTok. I'm sorry. That might be the case, but try again. Let's see. Or maybe change it to, a, is it a business page? Is this considered, did, is your settings on a business page or a creator page? It's personal profile because the sounds for the business. Oh, wait. <laughs> that, yes, that is true. Okay. So you might have to wait for a certain amount of following to change it, but double check that. Double check that. Um I'm looking at other people using certain TikTok. I mean, hashtags to see. Okay. All right. Let me go back to this post just to get in. So up, do upcycled fashion instead of denim. DIY fashion. That's good. Yes. Um, jeans. And maybe even think about certain trends that are happening outside of what we're like, like when you're looking at jeans, maybe 
the silhouette of jeans because wide leg jeans are all the rage right now. Everyone's wearing wide leg jeans, cargo jeans, you know what I'm saying? Straight leg jeans. Um, even putting like jeans or uh, outfit of the day, you can tag that in there because if you wear it at the end of the video type of thing, maybe that could be it. But try to be a little bit more Gen Z about these hashtags that we're using. So whenever you look over your content, and tap on all of these hashtags that you've used and look to see what comes up and go on to those videos that have a lot of views and look at their other hashtags and see if any of those other hashtags that that creator uses, if it can apply to your current video and use it on the next one. Does that make sense? Because I feel like I don't know who's going to be looking up lace embroidery. I feel like that's a very small amount of people that will be looking that up. DIY fashion, yes. Upcycled denim, yes. Recycled denim, no. Sustainable fashion, yes. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So like try to try to change some of the hashtag approaches and see see what's really trending on TikTok. Um this is nice. Where is this? Arizona? Oh, no. Baja, California, Mexico. This is nice. We've got oranges and shit in it. This is nice. This is where we, I want to go there. This is very nice. Okay. We like the lifestyle. Okay. So here's the thing. Since, since you are showing some travel and this is, this is more of a personal page for you, put something in your bio about you as the creator. Like I love to do X, Y, Z, make this, make this a bit more personal. If we're going to see some of your lifestyle within this and Aaron, I want you to talk to the camera. I know, I know. I want you to talk to the camera. I see you in some of these, you're smiling in the photo or the video. We see you in the, in the, you Aaron, I need you to not hate your voice. I think you have, you are like my favorite awkward black girl. Like you have a voice that I love. You say things. It's just, you are so authentic. It's, it's crazy how you don't understand this. You, you know how Issa Rae pop, popped off? That is you. Like people are going to find you and love you and connect. And you just have to be yourself, literally. I want you to talk through some of your designs. I want you to talk through why you're doing certain things. And if you're not ready to do a talk to the face, and there's someone else in this live, I'm not going to point you out just yet, but you know who you are because you know, we work together. I know what it takes. It, it's, it's weird to talk at the camera and hear your voice. Sometimes I don't, I do not rewatch my videos after I edit the video. I just make sure the things are there and then I send it off. I do not rewatch my own videos. I probably only did it twice. Okay. So I get it, but maybe what you can try is doing a voiceover over some of your designs. Like I know you have music on, on these, right? Maybe you can have music still at a very low level, not over 10 volume, but have your voice speaking through your design and why you did something a certain way. And I want you to get a tripod. Do you have a tripod, Aaron? I need you. I need people to see you at eye level, but have full view of what you put on. Okay. So update your bio a little bit better to have a little bit more personal touch. See if you can change your top name to reflect what is happening on your page and double check what's going on with your website link. And <laughs> okay, yeah, get, get um, I'll put on the community posts, different tools and links that I, I use to create things with. Um, and also really understand what hashtags you're using and use the ones that are affiliated with your posts that can have potential to, to be searched. Like people are really searching some of these. Cause yeah, lace embroidery, like not right now, maybe fall because we're going to see a lot more lace in the fall. And I feel like people are going to be looking lace anything in the fall, but not right now. 
You want to take advantage of certain other trends. Okay, who else is next for Misha's view? All right. Are we good? Like we good on, I know like it's we're getting late. So I'm, I'm going to wrap it up and I want y'all also to ask any personal styling questions now so I can, I can get to them when we wrapped up on this. Okay. I feel like I, I do not see your post, Nisha. Okay. Look, I haven't seen your stuff come up. When's the, you, the last time you posted? Oh, no. That's pinned. Sorry. Seven hours ago. I was about to start yelling. I'm sorry. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm like, no, you have not posted this March of last year. Okay. What's going on here? All right. Where is Nisha at? Okay. Excuse me. Okay. So I, I'm looking at your most recent post, Nisha. I love your description, how thorough it is, how informative it is with what you're sharing in that post, right? One thing that I'm going to call out on this post of yours, you see this square image you're using? Don't do that no more. Use the full screen. And I also want you to stick with more video because the video that you got going on in here or that's just the picture moving, I don't know, but maybe you can attain that with video. That's the move. That's the screen moving, isn't it? No, that's some video too. You got some video in there. So yeah, make sure your videos, long ways, short form, long view, okay? But I think your um, the imagery is crisp. I like this storytelling with the fashions. This, so people are definitely testing this format on TikTok. And they're, I don't know if people are gaining traction from it. A lot of people were talking about how TikTok is trying to do more long form video like YouTube. So they're making people do it like this. If it is something that is lasting more than five minutes, do it in this in this view, right? But if not, long view. But I do think you are doing really good with your description. Um, when it comes to your hashtags as well, do something like cute and casual. Yes, elevated casual. Okay. Do elevated basics. Do casual outfits. Jordan one year, the dragon. Do Jordans. OOTD, yes. Personal style, very good. Spring style, yes. Or spring fashion. You get what I mean? Make it a little bit more specific and actually search the hashtags that we're using so we can, you know what I'm saying? But I think, oh, I like how this is going. All right. Hey, now. She said, I'm going to show you these tabs. Oh, I like. You need to do this. This, this, do this every time. What is that? Oh, that's the shirt. Okay. I was like, don't you throw in the picture. We was doing. Yeah. Yeah. We're having fun. This is nice. That's nice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And you got good, you got more views on that one. Okay. So, oh, you talking on one. So you see the one you're talking on got 700 views. Talking, people hearing your voice, it's a connection to your spirit. People want to know us. They want to, they, they need to get to know you better. So don't be afraid to talk at the camera. This is for everybody. Don't be afraid to talk to the camera. Don't be afraid to do voiceovers. People want to hear our voices. Storytelling is real, but Overall, I like this consistency. This is really great. It looks healthy. I like your um, I like your imagery. It's it's very um distinct. I like this. All right, keep going and let me look from Nisha's view. Again, top name, change it, change it a little bit differently. Um, a photographer that loves fashion and shoes. I like that. 
simple and plain. You got your email. You got your um your link tree here. All right. Come on now. And then go into your YouTube. Let's see. All right. Okay. So you posted a video four days ago and the one before that was a month ago on YouTube. You have got to create a schedule for YouTube. You have got to be there before your tribe and there after your tribe. Okay. When you do regular schedule, like, so y'all know when I'm posting, it's either you're going to see it at 12 or at six. And if you see it at six, it's because someone wrong the day of, and I'm, I'm last minute murder. Okay. But anyway, you guys know 12 or six to expect me on Sunday and Thursday and, or Wednesday rather. You guys expect that. That's where the trust begins when I'm showing up every single time when I said I would, right? You have to create consistency in scheduling your post on, on YouTube. TikTok and Instagram, that could be a little bit different as far as times of day. Like you might post at 9 a.m. or you realize, okay, let me post at 6 p.m. today. It might change all the time, right? But you can create a schedule for it. You could. You could. It might be a little aggressive if you're doing YouTube. But like, if you're going to be doing YouTube at all, it has to be the same time that same day. If it's going to be every week, two o'clock every Friday. If it's going to be bi-weekly, every other Friday, 3 p.m. You know what I'm saying? People have to expect you and you have to put it in your description when they should expect you. So work on that, please. Work on that. All right, who was after from Nisha's view? Okay, Savvy Lux. All right, I'm going to try and hurry up because obviously like we'll do more the next time, but I want to get everybody right now. Savvy Lux, gotcha. Okay, all right. I hate when they put the other people pictures up there. Welcome to Savvy Lux, a black owned fashion clothing online women's boutique. Okay, so we are clothing more skims. More skims. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, personality. We're having fun. My makeup essentials, this Bobby Brown face base before I do anything. Yeah. Okay, so you see here, you're in the car. I hear that sound in the background. We want to be mindful of our volume controls on these platforms so we can make sure people can hear us consistently. But I also employ you to use more video and talking through these things or having the product right in front of you. Because if we're talking about product, we're, we're seeing all these other images go on in the background. It's a little distracting. Right. So let's be mindful about what we're putting in front of people and be mindful of our voice or sound control. But I think you have personality. You don't you do not have you're not holding back. And I love that. See, even a dog made a made a, uh, an appearance in the back. But this is healthy. This is really great. And I think, too, let me just look at your um description. Same goes for you. Just, yeah, be mindful of your hashtags and maybe do, instead of SS24, do spring, spring fashion, spring trends. Because like, yes, real fashion people know SS24, like they'll look up certain things like that. But in real um, searching, people are going to spell out those types of things. Um, but yeah, elevated basics. Savvy Lux, let me see what goes on with that that hashtag. So with that hashtag, yes, only your stuff comes up, but keep it. I say keep it because it's branding, but I think also there might be another way to spin the word savvy with another hashtag, but just do some research. But if, if this is a boutique, there's a lot of personal going on too. So should you say instead of a boutique, the owner, 
of a black owned fashion online boutique. Because if we're showing some of our personal edge, our lifestyle, then it's not just about product business only. It's a whole package. So you might want to reconsider just saying this is an online fashion boutique, because when I get to the description, I read it I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'll just, I'll tap into the Instagram and like, you know, do things from there or where are the pieces that they're selling, you know, cause I see beauty, I see family, I see outfit of the days, but I don't, I'm not seeing pop out at me exactly what you're selling. Maybe this is, okay, you're doing a photo shoot for what I'm assuming is product for your site, right? Okay. Aiming for Sundays. Okay. Ooh. Okay. You created this name 20 plus years ago. I paused the boutique. Okay. Well, yeah. So if it's no longer a boutique, then we got to change up the description and how we present ourselves. Savvy Lux is, is your name and that's perfectly fine, but maybe just say um, fashion, lifestyle, beauty at the top and like rearrange your description. But listen, you have no problem showing your personality. I think that's amazing. That sometimes it's scary for a lot of people, but I think this is awesome. So yeah, reconfigure the description and a name and try to stick to more video instead of photos and be mindful of your volume in the background. Um oh Lord, I done went all the way up there now. Okay. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. I just, I just want to know if in, from an influencer perspective, you can get the brand aesthetic or if it looks to, to, oh, you wanted me to see how it looks. So from my point of view, it looks like a more of a DIY page. Do you want it to be more brand orientated, Aaron? Um, Okay. Personal style is where I'm in need, not TikTok, but these are gems. Yes. Yeah, so tell me what, what do you need with personal style? Like what are some of your hesitation spaces? Um, I'll start with video going forward. You were so talented. Yeah. Those pants are beautiful. Okay. I thought I couldn't do that. Okay. I saw that. It yes, makes sense. I don't want to realize it. Okay. Um, okay. Do the full screen. It's a video. Okay. Okay. I have one. I want to wear pink for spring, right? Like I, like a lot. Don't judge me because you know how I feel. I don't love pink for me, but I love pink on other people. But for the days I'm wearing cute pink tanks and bodysuits, what suggestions do you have for bottoms? Ooh, I feel like you should try. Not, okay. So I love pink and brown. Just, just try it like a rich caramel type of brown. Try it with red or like a harsher pink or a lighter pink. Try it with a very pastel baby blue, but not like dusty blue. You know what I'm talking about. There's, there's dusty blue and then there's, there's pastel pale blue. Also, not like AKA pink. Excuse me, unless you're AKA, no, no shade. I'm just saying like sometimes people are like, oh no, pink and green, that's AKA. But like go with pink in an olive green. Oh my God. Okay. And like, just, just try, try those combinations. So browns, other pinks, uh, reds, baby blue, like a pastel baby blue or olive green. Oh, it's those color combinations are yummy as hell. And I feel like do, I don't know, depending on the actual body suit or the top, you know, do a wide leg, do a funky skirt with some pattern on it. I, I know um, Zara has a skirt, like a pencil skirt right now that I think is like a linen blend and it has like pink and pattern, uh, pink and like a floral pattern on there with red and white that looked really cool. It was very um, like old Prada-esque. But that's that's what I'm thinking. And, and do like a white shoe every time with any of those mixes. Um, do you feel overdressed when you pick 
your outfit of the day. I feel like my family and friends are basic in style. And, and although I love my outfit, I constantly feel overdressed. Let me tell you something. I actually skipped over this because I was like, I think this needs to go last on the list. Family bonds is on my list of mindset. When you are out here creating and posting and sharing your perspective and how you like shit, you need to not care about any of your friends and family's perspective or what they think of you because they're going to be the last motherfuckers to like something. I'm just being honest. People are also going to be like, I don't understand what you do. Like, what is this consecration shit you're doing? Like, how are you even making money? You need to explain nothing to these people. Let them catch on when they catch on. If you feel overdressed and fantabulous, then baby, that's the outfit. And do I feel overdressed? I feel like I'm right at, at home. No, I don't. Sometimes I feel underdressed. And you know what's funny? Sometimes the videos where I feel like very underdressed or just like this is this is, it, like today I'm wearing a t-shirt and jeans and people are like, oh my God, I love your outfit. I'm like, really? This is this is this is really simple. You like this shit? But like even when I'm overdressed, I don't give a shit because I still feel good in it. Don't ever feel or second doubt your outfit of the day because of friends and family and their basic styles. When you're in this space, and that's that's a part of the sacrifice too, a mental sacrifice is just like, I cannot, you cannot think about other people's point of view of what you're doing or what you're wearing or what you're sharing, unless it's like, they don't want to be in the video. You know what I mean? But hell no, I don't feel, I feel good. I like what I like. You got to commit to that shit too. <laughs> if I'm going for edginess with pattern or tech, wait. If I'm going for, wait, that was the continuation to the first question. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't understand. I didn't see it. Wait, did I answer this though? Did I answer with the right? I'm sorry, Miss Homebody. Did, I'm sorry. Um, Let me know below. I'll find it. Personal style. Since the panini, I've been working from home. Get overwhelmed with when it's time to step out for events and homecoming. Let me tell you. We are all realizing that we were traumatized as hell wearing all these sweatpants and all these soft apparels during the panini. And I think you really just have to do a purge, right? Get rid of some of your super, like, if you have duplicates of certain leisure wear, start passing them along and donate them, right? And really start to remember what your personal style was before the panini and find her in your closet and get reacquainted with her in your closet. And when it comes to going out to events, like that's when maybe sourcing some inspiration from Pinterest or saving to a specific folder from Instagram, certain outfits that just speak to you for whatever reason, or certain pieces some somebody is wearing might speak to you and start saving those things and start and, and look at the pattern of how your personal style has evolved since then. But I think more or less like, Really start with purging the stuff that you you know it's like it's too much. I've accumulated too many leisure things in here. That's I'm I'm clouded with this stuff and free yourself of more space and tap back into who you were before the the pandemic, which I know is probably a very different person for different reasons, right? But remember what you liked then, so you're not so easily influenced now. If that makes sense, um, gotta talk. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, okay. Aiming for Sundays. Okay, good. Wait, this whole thing just jumped. Oh shit. Okay. I'm back. Wait. Oh. Um, okay. Thank you so much. I'm trying to get better. Actually promoting my product. Yes. Miss Happy, I'll be following you back. No, it's fine. It's fine. You should, I'm following you back. Okay, good. Um, I was referring to my IG and wondering if that looked more pro fash since that's what I thought I should use to get influencers maybe. Okay. I think your TikTok page looks a lot more personal than business. I want TikTok to look more DIY behind the scenes because I feel like the demo on there is younger but the advice you gave was so great. I apply either way. Yeah, I think, um, but that's the thing. I think behind the scenes of your product development 
is good for showing up as a professional, as a business. But I think too, showing the product in a more professional setting, like once it's done, whether it's worn on you or worn on someone else, that should also be a part of the process. But I think maybe maybe getting like a little quick backdrop situation. And so those images are like, this is the um, the editorial version of this product and how it's used. But this is the behind the scenes video of how we got here. So it's like, you know, you might want to create a storytelling. So it's like part one, concept, part two, production, part three, completion. Boom, there you go. I'm sorry. I feel like that might be a winner because that shit just came out of my head, y'all. Can you can you try that and see what happens? And, and let me know. Can you try that? I just want to see something. That's so true. I get most sales from complete strangers. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, listen, I, I have experienced like a, my friends and family were my first customers when it came to Noir Bud, but the amount of strangers that came along after. I was like, dang, I don't know none of these people. This is crazy. You know, people from Alaska was ordering shit. I'm like, how does this happen? But, you know, it, it can happen either way. But like to not have an expectation of having support from specific people, you will be let down. You should just say, listen, I, I appreciate any support. And when it comes, you'll be delighted and happy with whatever happens, whether it's someone you know or someone you don't. Style question, what are your thoughts about linen in general and sportswear specifically? I live in a desert and want to be cool, but put together when I go into the office, send help. I love a um, a linen cotton blend or I'm not going to lie, like a linen um, like synthetic kind of blend. So there's not as much wrinkle. But let me tell you something. My fondest memories of my mom's fashion is her wearing linen in Aruba. And I think there's ways to go about it. I think there's ways where you can do linen suiting. You can do casual uh, cargo linen with like a really cool t-shirt with like an asymmetrical um, cut or a tank top that has strings hanging down. Like there's different ways. Right now, Zara has some really cute... Um, t-shirts that have like different cuts and appeals to them. So it's like you can mix it up that way. And I also think being monochromatic in linen or cotton outfits is really chic as well. Um, do you feel like you're more of a minimalistic person or a maximalist? Uh, but I think like linen and cottons and like suiting, like casual suiting is really chic in hot climates like that. Um, that is so true. I thought my friends and family would support me more. Mm -hmm. I also plan on doing red hair all spring. It's a lot going on, I know, but it's a vision. I'm trying to get it out. The red braids I have on my social media is currently what I have. Listen, that's the, that's the magic of us. Like we can change our hair and be a whole different person. Like we can show up so many different ways and people are just going to have to catch up and just enjoy. You know what I mean? Red hair suggestions, I'll take them. I love I love ginger, red ginger coloring. I think it's cute. It's like Ariel, the mermaid. Yes. Um, that sounds amazing. I will, it will work on me. Yeah. The, the thing for Aaron, right? That's true. Friends and family do support it. And I love that too. But I try not to expect it too much because not everything is for everyone. And that's okay. Right. And sometimes our closest friends and family, they'll be like, what's the discount? I'm like, it is, if you don't get out my face, like we get into those types of things, you know? Yes. That's what you guys talk to post more before, during, and after photos. I don't have any models. So it would just be me. Right. Listen, that's what I'm saying. Like, as long as they see the finished product on the body, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I really wanted y'all to just understand fully, you know, there is there is a mindset to have synergy with, you know, and that is to not have expectations of how things can go when it comes to this stuff, as far as having expectations of other people. You have to show up for yourself. You have to make the sacrifice with your time, with your energy, with the effort, with researching, 
you know, like researching different hashtags or researching what people are watching and, you know, like maybe, okay, like, let's say if I wanted to create a new concept in a series, like I'm looking at Janae Naylor style unlocked videos. I'm looking at um, different girls vlogs from the South and like what's trending there. Like, why do they have millions of followers? Like what's going on? Like I watch different people's vlogs. I even watch people who do not look like me. And I'm just curious to see what they're doing. And a lot of time it's the bare minimum, but they get access to everything. <sighs> but anyway, I look and I do a lot of research and that takes a lot of time. It takes a sacrifice. Of, I would rather watch Netflix and watch, I don't know, the circle or some shit, right? But at the same time, I want to grow. So really, I prefer to do the research and learn more about what's out there and what's missing. And then I create different concepts from what's missing or what I have questions about, you know, so sacrificing time and energy, sleep, all that stuff. It's well worth it in the long run, you know, not having an expectation on what our family and friends might have to say, um, making sure that you're aligned with yourself mentally, that you're tapped in on a therapeutic level, whether you're having therapy or whether you have someone to, to be a sounding board or you have a healthy outlet of working out or something to keep you steady. Because if you get one nasty comment or a, a thumbs down, you know, if you're not mentally like prepared and stable with this, it can turn your whole week around if you're not prepared, if you're not understanding that people are just not going to like certain things and some people are going to go out their way to make you upset or to make you feel unwanted. And at the end of the day, you have to have a, enough mental stability to say to yourself, that's just not my tribe. And I can delete it, block it, or I can just let it sit there and they just have to deal with it. That has nothing to do with me. I'm trying. I'm doing my best. And also not having an expectations on, on your resources at this time. Like it's okay to start from ground zero or to learn something new and just taking your time and being gradual, but post it, share it anyway. It, it can't, it's not going to be perfect for a while. And even when you feel like it's perfect, it's still not going to be perfect. You still going to want something different. So you know that ain't no reason why you should be holding anything back until waiting for perfection. Do not wait for perfection. It is perfect now. And making sure that you're picking friends wisely, that you're you're following your gut instinct on, on what you're seeing, what you're surrounded by. Um, and, and asking for help and saying, listen, I really like your energy. You know, if you're, if you know about anything else going on in this, in this industry or this perspective, like, can you please let me know? I just want to, you know, give me feedback or can we get coffee from time to time? Let's do this. You know, don't be afraid of that. Like if you really feel like a soul connection with someone, don't be afraid of that, but also listen to your gut when you don't feel a connection and you can't put your finger on it because you don't want to be asked out when it comes out in the wash, what's going on. Right. And having a healthy amount of envy in this space to keep you motivated but understanding when you get to a toxic side of envy that you're hating on someone or you're questioning why they get X, Y, and Z, you got to tap out and unfollow or mute them until you feel a little bit better about what you're doing in your lane, okay? But good envy is healthy for motivation purposes and just like, you know, keeps, keeps the blood pumping. And remember always to give credit when it's due, you know, no matter how small or big, the, the source of inspiration is always shout out that person. Um, you're a maximalist for sure. But so, you know, when it comes to maximalism and being in a hot place like that, you know, I'm thinking more accessories, more focus on texture and accessories um, rather than the clothing on the body, because I feel like it can get hot real quick or real uncomfortable with too many layers, but like your accessories might be able to speak more to the maximalist, the maximalist in you. Um, hats and sunglasses, earrings, all those things can speak a lot more loudly. But maybe instead of doing more of like monochromatic, maybe you could do printed versions of these things. Um, more breathable fabrications, but printed. Make, tap into what Erin got going on over her site. I'm just saying. She got some easy breezy things that are very beautiful, like easy breezy to the touch, but like 
the prints are printing. Um, it could be hard when you're putting in the work, but the growth is super slow. Very grateful for your tips. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. You know, and I will tell you, like, it 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 took a minute to grow. Um, but once I hit a certain goal, it just it snowballed from there. And I didn't I didn't look back, you know. I had the goal of being consistent all last year, the year before I was not, I took months off and it showed, you know, and I couldn't monetize within the first year of, um, 2022 and then 2023, I said, you know, I'm going to be consistent twice a week. Well, I think at first it was once a week. I said, I'm going to gear up. I'm, I'm going to do twice a week. Yeah, I'm going to do this. And I'm, I'm going I'm to ask them what days work best for, for the tribe that I have right now. And I'm going to keep going. I'm going to read the comments and get feedback and I'm gonna feed off of that and get inspiration for new videos and I'm gonna I'm gonna give the people what they want but with my spin on it and once I hit that goal of 10,000 this year I don't know what happened but it's snowball I'm already at 20 over 20,000 now I just hit 20,000 like in the midnight hour last night you know so it's it's because I just continuously show up and to be honest I'm not I'm not really in the space where I'm comparing myself still, but I'm just researching to see what what voids there are in the creative space to see what I can fulfill, what feels innate to me. But I I have no reason to slow down right now. And I also am refocusing a little bit more on the short form and trying to figure out how I want to show up there. So it's like you are always going to be in a space where you're reinventing yourself, your, yourself here. And that's another reason why you shouldn't hold back on posting things when you have something to share. Um, wait, go, Aaron. Shout you out on the roster. Oh, you did the with the chicken. That did look good. I didn't watch the whole thing because I wanted to see some more stuff while I was um, doing your audit. But yes, thank you. That's so good. Yeah, that roster pasta. I made that one too spicy. I ain't tell y'all it was spicy, but it was spicy. And the next morning, my ass was paying for it. I know that's TMI. But I'm just saying, y'all got to be careful with the heat. Just saying, I paid for it the next morning, but it was so good. Um, oh, you made my pasta this weekend. It was so good. Yes, the boyfriend loved it. I can hardly wait to get a new laptop. This is why my YouTube is non-existent. So what, what are you doing? You know what? I have edited. I have shot. <clears throat> excuse me. I have shot and edited a video on my phone using, where's the app? Using the InShot app, the one in the middle here. I've created a whole video, like a 15 minute video for YouTube in this app. I use InShot for all of my long, my short form video um, on InShot. I could learn CapCut. I'll do it, but I've been using InShot this whole time. And I feel like you could still use your phone and that type of app for YouTube and upload from your phone as well. I'm telling you, sometimes you can use the bare minimum of, of tools and create something to start telling your story until you're ready to move it to the next level. Um I told you we cookies are going to blow you up this year. Listen, that it happened so fast to the point where like sometimes I'm like, okay, I look at the file. I'm like, I feel like I know the first 10,000 and like we it, we're here, but the newest 10,000, I'm like, who are y'all? Who are these people? Because a lot of them say in their comments, I'm not your typical demographic, but I love this. And I'm like, well, who are, what, what is, what demographic are you from? How did you get here? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it makes me sometimes nervous now growing another 10,000 so quickly because I'm like, who are these people? Like, what are they into? What, do, do they comment anything? Like, it is a very strange territory to be in right now. Cause I'm like, I know the cookies from last year and the year before, but who are these people? Y'all can say, but like. What y'all into? What kind of shit y'all into since y'all not my demographic? What do you see? What do you mean? What? And a lot of people are from out of the country. People like shouting out from Greece. I'm like, 
do you watch me in English? Like I have so many questions. So, but it, it happens, it happens. And, you know, I want to take the same energy to the other two platforms and do a lot more to show up there as I did in the beginning. And that's the thing, like you have to sometimes lean into one app a little bit more to just get, get the pattern going so you can see something from your labor, um, you know, to grow fruit from. But at some point you can shift gears and focus on the other ones all at the same time. But I will say, I think I focused a lot more on YouTube last year and it paid off very well. It did. So now I kind of want to put in the same energy on TikTok and Instagram because I already have my schedule and my flow on here. And it's very hard to interrupt at this point. But yeah, I don't know them people. I, like they're welcome to stay, but I feel like I don't know them. So I'm like, we got guests in our house, y'all. <laughs> um, hold on. So and I will and up the ante with the accessories. Yes, yes. Um, but I would like to speak more to spring and summer styling. So I, I could do something here. If you guys have other like specific uh, styling questions, email them to me and I will curate the second video, the style video that is only going to live here from those, from those um, comments and questions. So this month, I'm going to see if I can make this member stuff public so people know what we're doing. Um, so I feel like some people will be more comfortable to join or whatever. So I'm going to make this public if I can figure it out, or at least the other two videos public. And then after this month, it's not going to be public. <laughs> That's it. I'm gonna give them a sneak peek. That's it. Um, and posting to YouTube. Okay. I've been, I've tried it and was unsuccessful with the upload. I wonder how long it was. Cause that could be a thing or, um, man, go, go, go to the library or to an Apple store and transfer the, the document, the, um, the thing to that computer and upload it. <laughs> when I tell you, when you make your mind to learn and to do something in this space, you get to a point where if a small child is in your way, you are knocking that baby over. There, when when I did Vlogmas in December, and Carlos and his mom and ev everybody was going through this shit last month in, in the month of December, and I I showed up how I needed to, and I I did what I needed to do. I, I was there, but when I tell you, I would stay up to the wee hours of the morning to make sure I had an upload for the next day. Nothing. There was no sleep lost in that month to me. I didn't feel like I lost any any ounce of sleep because I was like, you know what? I'm going to get this shit done by any means necessary on that Malcolm X time. I was like, no baby, we're doing it. I don't care if I don't feel good. I don't care if I feel like this video is not good enough. I'm posting it. Everything's going to get done. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I was, I was like, oh my God, I didn't even see the actual 20,000. It was over when I woke up. I was like, oh, 2000, 20,020. That's cool. You know? <laughs> So listen, by any means necessary, you got you, but first step, you got to make up your mind and dig deep about what you're willing to share. That's the very first step on mindset. Um, I want to follow everyone here, but I didn't catch all the handles. Everyone repost your handles. Not everyone's still here. A few people dropped off. Um, but try, yeah, try to upload them from your from your uh, phone again. Um, but yeah, thank you, thank you guys. So listen, I'm, we'll wrap up here, and I will do the. Uh, I will reiterate what we talked about a little bit more, just a little bit more refined in the video format about mindset. So that will be the next video that will be posted here in this space. And then at the end of the month, I'll do a personal style video, but I would like to know if there are specific events coming up or if there's certain things I should know about your wardrobe before answering a question and, you know, go from there. But yeah, everybody put their handles in there. Um, and 
who uh miss homebody remember to to email me or you did already i didn't see it if you did but we got to figure out what's going on with your um your your youtube and why like it's not searchable like what the hell um Hold on. I'm looking up. What she say? Okay, got you. Thank you guys. I, I really hope that um you know this creates inspiration to go after things that you're curious about. Um I want our relationship to get much tighter. Wait, did I spell that right? She ta is this on Instagram or TikTok? Is this not coming up on TikTok? Hold on, let me go to the other one. Um, okay, I got you on, on Insta. Okay. Um, but but yeah, I, I want this to be a space of growth because I, I do not the way things are going, I'm I foresee not being able to take too many one-on-one -on -one clients. And I'm just like, you know what, this is a conversation that I know a lot of people want to have and, and are curious about. And why not just have it set up this way, you know? Um, but let me see the next topic. Uh, wait, where is it? Oh my God. Okay. So the next topic for the month of April is going to be more about who am I on social media? And how to tell your story to how to figure out your niche and that that area. So I'm going to refine the, the syllabi a little bit more for myself when we get there. But that is going to be the focus. What how to figure out your niche, how to how to story tell in your own way. Um, and probably before we actually do that live, I would do a little bit more deep diving into your your pages so I can speak directly to that on the live um, and, see, and see how you feel about the feedback. But we're definitely, we're going to dig deep a little bit more into storytelling and niche, niche, because niche could be more than one thing, to be honest. Don't be scared about having one niche that that's not going to work all the time for us humans. So, and then after that, we're going to be creating goals for like following count, um, creator and brand goals, like what kinds of, what kinds of things do you want to do with your social media presence? Um, also personal styling goals. The other things that we're going to cover is how to pitch yourself to influencers or to brands, um, how to assert yourself in your style, how to build a media kit, um, which is what they ask for when, when you start working with different brands, or if you're doing seminars or teaching or, you know, speaking, speaking, um, engagements, how to charge for stuff like that. Other things are how to stay authentic, how to say yes and no, um, how to prep for different events within your industry. So like if fashion month is coming up, how do we prepare for that? What kind of communication goes into that? What kind of styling goes into that? What kinds of money goes into it? You know what I'm saying? We're going to talk about money. We're going to talk about how to make money on this, on these platforms, how to network in real life and on social, um, how to deal with burnout and negativity, uh, and then by the end of the year, we're going to prepare for the holidays, what that's going to look like when it comes to presenting ourselves on social and preparing our, our wardrobes too, flipping out our wardrobes. But I want to see in December how everyone has grown in different ways. So it is more content focused, but there's a lot of opportunity for personal style to be developed within this space too. So I hope y'all enjoyed this. Thank you for tuning in and signing up for this. Um, I was very nervous about it. And I really am just hoping and praying that you guys take the first step and just keep going and don't second guess yourself and try all the things because I think by December, you will be pleasantly surprised by the amount of blessings that come your way and the, by just being proud of what you've done. That's all. You know, I want y'all to feel super proud of yourselves by the end of this year. 
and feel all the power to go into the next year. And then we do things from there. You know what I mean? So yeah, I hope, I hope this was good. I hope you liked it. And I will save this. Y'all know I'm still figuring this shit out. So I'm going to figure out how to do the thing. And then we're going to do the thing. And then I'll post the two videos and all the things. And I'll write y'all messages and stuff like that too. Okay? <laughs> I'm going to figure this shit out as I go. But yes, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I hope you guys have a good end of the week. And y'all, I'll post a video on Sunday for everybody to see. But yeah, I'll see you guys later. Okay? Bye, y'all. Have a good night. Oh, thank you. I pray for y'all, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, All right, y'all. Have a good night. Thanks for staying up late. I know some of y'all, it's probably later where y'all at if y'all further over east. Okay, good. All right, y'all. Okay, I'm glad. Yes, everybody follow every day, at least she... she <laughs> You just not putting that in there, Lord. All right, y'all. Okay. Wait, let me make sure I got it. Amber. Oh, what's yours? Did you put yours? Well, you don't want to. It's okay if you don't want to. It's, I, I get it. I get it. But I don't see yours. I hope I didn't miss anything. Amber, oh, if you want to share your page, please do. Oh, you're in LA. Okay. I got a few people on the West Coast. Amber, oh, if you're still on, you want to put your 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 at? Or if not, that's fine. Comment on one of my latest videos and so I can just see you. <laughs> if you're still on. All right, I'll, I'll shut it off. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, her. Oh, okay. Because I didn't see that. I did not see her. I didn't see it. Okay, thank you. Is it her? Okay. All right, y'all. But maybe not. I don't know. All right, y'all. Yes. <laughs> Aaron. All right, y'all. I'm going to cut it down now. I'll see y'all later, okay? <laughs> okay, bye, cookies. All right.